and my name is John King. I'm in Uber Presto team, and it has been talked a lot during the talk. So in the next following slides, I'm going to talk Presto at Uber. Now first, let's talk about Presto a little bit. So Presto is an interactive security engine designed for the big data. And in the client side, it's using HTTP as transportation protocol. The CRI, JDBC, and ODBC, they're all using HTTP. And it's fully compatible with NC CQ format. So the Presto cluster itself contains one coordinator and several workers. And the client sends a query to the coordinator. The coordinator will build the query and build the plans. And the workers actually execute plans and reading data and processing. The speed is pretty fast because all the data here is processed inside memory. And it has a very good horizontally scalable infrastructure, means that by adding new, more workers to your cluster, your cluster will become became more powerful and can be processing more data. Through the connector plugins, uh, architecture, it can talk into the external storage and the metadata system. Uh, in Uber, we're using Hive, it basically is Hive metadata store and HDFS. And we're also using Pnode and Elect search serving the real-time traffic. And we're also using MySQ and GMX for the metrics. It has a very good extension board architecture, means that by adding your own plugins, you can talk into your own storage system. So here comes the Uber scale. So we have around three data centers, and in each data center, we have around five clusters for different kind of usage. For example, we have big ad hoc clusters. We also have secure clusters. And we are serving around 3,000 daily active users, which is sending around 80,000 queries per day. And uh, we are processing really lots of data. We're processing around 700 million HDFs file per day, and it's 10 pegabytes of data. That's the reason our HDFS team want to do so many optimization on HDFS. So here's our clients. Again, Presto is really widely used in the Uber production services and infrastructures like DSW. So talk about a little bit of example. So we are using Presto to calculate the, the driver insensitive and pricing. We also draw the BI dashboard for the gross marketing. And we also use to do the data freshness, the freshness check and the quality check. And sometimes the communication platform will leverage Presto to do some data analytics and maybe arrive the customer for some special purpose. And the data scientists and end users, they just randomly send ad hoc queries to us. So the next few slides, I'm going to talk about some of the optimizations that our team has been working over the last couple of years. You guys heard this a lot. Is the first one is geospatial query optimization. So Back to the case, so for example, the trip, it is very common in the Uber platform. So what is a trip? So a trip has a start and end point. So this is an 18 minutes trip from somewhere in San Francisco to the airport, I think. In our system, this trip is stored by a lot of points down the line. And it has latitudes and longitudes. And of course, we start the start at and the drop off locations. So usually the interesting question will be like, how many events happen in a particular geo area? For this example is uh, our airport, SFO airport. It's, it's always not a regular shape. So in our system, we store that as a polygon, which contains uh, multiple points and the verticals between these points down the line. Then you can see the screen that we store a lot, of, a lot of longitudes and latitudes for this polygon to represent SFO and airport. So the typical GeoFence query will be looks like you will select something from a rider events table and join the airport table. And the most important thing is we want to check a, spe a special air uh, rider event geo location is inside our airport by using SD contents function call. So typically we do this by using cross join. How does it work is for each individual event in the rider events, we will go ahead to check all the airport to see whether this event in, is inside this airport. The fundamental the time complexity will be ON times N, based on the number of the events and the airports. It's really slow because we have a really lots of data. Usually we have billions number of records in the rider events table. And for example, if we have 200 airports, such query will run by days, which is really, really slow. Here comes the intent for us to do optimizations. Let's see how it works. 
still we have m number of airports. Now instead of drawing for the each single point, first we build a quad tree. So let me talk about a little bit about quad tree. Quad tree is the way we build the geo index. The way that is how it works is by a single point in a two dimension area, it would able to break the bring the space by four dimensions. For example, northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. Still, we have n number of events need to be checked. Now, first step, we go to this quad tree. And what a quad tree can give us is a fixed number of potential airport which contains this event. Now, finally, we join this with the event. Now, the time complexity will be reduced to n times log m, which is significant. Here comes our benchmark result. You can see typically for some queries, we got 10x in terms of execution time. And in some critical case, we got 40x or even more. So the, here's a, some geospatial optimization highlights. So first, from implementation, we don't want the user to rewrite their queries. Presto do everything behind the scene. It first rewrite user query using quad tree. <coughs> and uh, during the runtime, we build a quad tree on the fly in a coordinator. Then we're pushing this quad tree to all the workers. Then all the workers can leverage this quad tree to maximally reduce the SD contents call. And we don't like any external dependencies. And of course, the query execution time is what we are looking for. So the next optimization I'm going to talk is Parquet. So you guys already, we already mentioned like Parquet is a very popular column star in the Hadoop ecosystem. And we are using that a lot. Still back to the point, we have millions of trips happens every day. And sometimes we just fail to get you moving. Then during that happens, we want to know what's going on. It could be like a rider cannot find the drivers or just rider just randomly uh, uh, cancel the trip. So in case happens, so we all the teams want to leverage such queries to know what's going on there. So let's look at this query. This query is simply join the trips table with the users table on some conditions. And based on the trip status, it can finally get to know how many completed trips and how many canceled trips. This trip looks pretty easy, but it's taking like several minutes to run. So we want to know what's, what's going on there and how we can optimize that. Now, first, let's look at how default packet reader works. So packet is a column star. It has column chunks and row groups like the traditional IDMS doing. Now, the first step is we read all packet nested field from disk. And from there, we can build our row groups. The next step is we transform the row groups into presto column star. Then finally, we invalidate the predicates on these column blocks and pushing the results to the presto column engine. So again, why it is slow? First is we have really large of data, means that every single query, we are facing a lot of packet files. The second reason is like our data in Uber's data is highly nested. For some table, we have up to 15 level of nested field, and uh, there's a lot of fields in, even in this nested fields. Means that the default packet reader is reading a lot of redundant data. So how we optimize it? Still we have a packet file, have the row groups and the column chunks. Now the first step is we read only required nested field. What it means the required field is the re field represent in the predicate or the selections. Now the second step is instead of building the row group first and then transform the column blocks, we just directly build the column blocks on the fly. Then after this step, the step three is we evaluate the predicates on the column blocks. After doing this, we realize there's some food optimization we can be doing. Actually, we're pushing down the step three to pushing one to one, and there's only one step here. We are leveraging the packet footer, which contains some statistical information, and we just evaluate predicates on the fly. So typically, the predicates has two way. First is just a simple direct, a direct predicates, or it can be an array or dictionary. So the, after all of this, the final optimization we are doing, we call lazy read, is we build column blocks only if the predicate matches. So that we skip a lot of row groups beforehand. So here we come as our, uh, comes our benchmark, benchmark results. You can see this also significant. For some of the, of the query, we've got a 10x and even more. 
here's our some of other projects we are we are working from the extension side we support electric search connector p node and a schema as connector and uh, for the gdp and the security compliance we are building some security features just including something related with impersonation and we also supported to using hdf delegation token verification and we are doing a lot of in the query optimizations we enable the hdfs name node cache and we do the aggregation and the join push down and cost based optimizer so we are small small team here and uh, thanks a lot that's it